Hi and wel I welcome you to my video class on water harvesting and conservation. Myself Vishwanath Avati. So we'll see the today's content. So today content we are mainly discussing about farm pond, introduction of it and specification and benefits. Even we are discussing about the benefits, design considerations, percolation tank, introduction and design considerations. So we'll see first what you mean by a farm pond. So farm pond are small water bodies. See here it is a small water body formed either by construction of small dam, small bund or embankment across the waterway, embankment across the waterway or by excavating or digging out. So here it is you can see in the image small excavation is there in the farmland and that they are only were storing the water so i'll repeat farm ponds are small water bodies formed by formed either by construction of a small dam or embankment across the waterway or by excavating the uh, ground right so here you can see the two type of farm ponds are there one is unlined whatever excavation of there it is what not formed by uh, some plastic materials right here in infiltrations also allowed so you can see second one here it is uh, bed is covered by plastic lined so you can call it is a form pond of unlined first one and second one is a form pond of uh, lined form pond right and water is usually harvested from a small catchment area then used for irrigation during the prolonged period so the main purpose of form pond is what usually we are collecting the uh, rain water from the small catchment area of agriculture land so then it is used for irrigation purpose and for the drought conditions next we'll see so here is specification. Specification is what here we can construct a ideal size with the 8 meter into 8 meter width and 8 meter length and 1.5 meter depth for every 1 hectare to 2 hectare of land. See here it is a mainly related to agriculture. So here you can construct each farm pond with a dimension of 8 meter width, 8 meter length and 1.5 meter depth for every 1 hectare to 2 hectare land areas and main is collecting the surface runoff so you can see here the based on the size so how much water you can uh, store and for which purpose you can use that tank so we'll start with less than less than 2000 less than 2000 square meter so that is you can store up to the depth of 1.5 meter to 2.5 meter and this mainly used for pot irrigation and for trees pot irrigation for trees and drinking water so after some purification even you can use this water for drinking purpose also and if it is a spreading area is 2000 to 10000 square meter then even same water storage you can make but you can use for irrigation other than some normal irrigation and drinking water so then we have 2000 to 10000 square meter and depth you can increase from 2.5 meter to 3 meter and this can use it for multi purposes one irrigation and horticulture of fisheries and drinking water right so next we'll see yes so here uh, benefits of farm pond what kind of benefits we can get from this so mainly it is what water harvesting we'll see one by one what are the different benefits of uh, ponds right so first one is it collects the excess runoff during the rainy period so as i told after the rainfall right when we are getting the rainfall right it will take some time to make saturation condition after that it will make surface runoff surface runoff so that surface runoff it can collect excess surface runoff not uh, all surface runoff excess surface runoff it can collect in a rainy season means we are reducing the direct runoff towards the stream so next stored water can be used for supplementary irrigation to the crop so then after the storing of water actually if we see the harvesting definition we are collecting and we are storing after the storing we are using for some different purposes so here also stored water right we are using for irrigation so stored water is using for irrigation purpose so then stored water can also be used for horticulture or making the you know some carving or uh, like some kind of fisheries um, then even it is also one of the profitable uh, work so next is fourth one it is useful for drinking water for cattle during the drought situation same stored water it will help us to supply the drinking water for 
cattles and even we can use for human drinking water after some treatment also so then same water can be used for spraying the pesticides or to kill the insects right even you can use for spraying the pesticides next it conserves the soil why because it is collecting when uh, surface runoff is taking place so with the surface runoff soil also will come as a erosion same water will be silted and it will be conserved the soil as well as moisture so then one more point actually it is not a main point but you can call it is a substitute point it is if it is unlined increase the infiltration of rainwater in a subsoil if you see the diagram right here i shown the unlined pump pond and plastic lined pump pond so if it is unlined if it is a unlined so then even it is increases the uh, infiltration right so next types of pump pond so here also many classifications are there but in broader sense and general category so here many types are there but in a general category so general category we are mainly classifying with embankment type and excavation type so if it is embankment embankment means it is what construction of bund but where we are constructing the bund across the natural river a natural stream you can see this is what natural stream right across this we are constructing the bund see you can see the bund here so this bund is constructed across the natural river or natural see here you can see constructed across the stream with the earthen bund so here as so a valley is there you can see the valley within the valley small bund is constructed and after the bund water is stored and it is also called as pump pond of embankment type so next we have excavated type so in this you can see in second second image in a flat area in a flat area of agriculture land so then excavation of material is taking place if for example if it is a flat area you can see then top so then it is what you cannot construct bund here and even you can construct bund but you cannot store the water to store the water what we are making we are excavating the material so then after excavating you can get a pump pond and it is called as excavated type of pump pond so next design considerations so actually we have to discuss in detail but you, these are the small structures and you can go to only design parameters and we already discussed in detail in order the different design parameters of small water harvesting structures right if you see the second video uh, in that uh, we discussed uh, what are the different categories and how to if i repeat here so it will start mainly with the site selection the only one change is what in a site selection we have to like you no know, we have to see the very good uh, uh, land where it is easily accessible and where you can remove less trees and less damageable right so but one is what uh, the site should be less seepage losses right you have to select in such a way that le uh, excess seepage should not be there less seepage less seepage in that area other than that all the same methods were using to construct the pump pond right and depends on the location and it depends on the requirement and even it depends on the uh, how much area is there and uh, all it depends on the requirement and uh, financial condition of the uh, farmer so but uh, here also we are seeking main step is selection of site based on some different conditions so then uh, determination of storage capacity after the determination of storage capacity we have to make the design of bund means size of bund and then top width bottom width and even side slope and even like you no know, uh, uh, upstream side stone pitching should be provided so then of uh, you have to remove the excess amount of water with the surplus weir then when you want to use the water to the agriculture then you have to provide supply uh, sluice gate so same parameters we are using here also to design the pump pond and go through the second video you will get in detail what are the different parameters are there to make the design of pump pond so now we will go for one more important right so protecting the farm ponds so protecting the farm pond why because some conditions like you no know, have to maintain a good condition for example first one is face of the dam see if you see the face of the dam here in the image upstream slope is there downstream slope is there in a downstream slope right that area should be like you no know, vegetated or grass it should be uh, provided with the grass why because it will help us to wind erosion and even for wave action 
wind wave action and it will be protected for landslide or maybe erosion so that's what we have to provide with the uh, visitation of the face of the dam if it is an embankment type and even it is not embankment type also but surface should be provided with the visitation mainly reason is to protect from the wind erosion or to protect from the soil erosion or landslide so next is fencing should be provided around the embankment so why we have to provide the fencing mainly to prevent the losses of live and mainly to prevent the uh, cattle entry of cattle otherwise it will be grazed vegetation will be grazed so that's what we have to remove uh, we have to protect from livestock and even for children's entry so it may cause the some problem that's what fencing should be provided you can see in the image this kind of fencing you can provide with the help of wire mesh and uh, poles so next is sanitization of pond and main purpose of sanitation pond is to maintain the clean water to maintain clean water if it is like you no know, across the uh, sewage drain then it is not good so we have to avoid the water of sewage and even we have to avoid the cleaning of cattle and even it we should avoid the connection between waste water and uh, good water so main condition is what sanitization of pond and main requirement is to maintain a clean water right i think you understood right so i'll repeat we discussed form pond what do you mean by form pond then specifications then uh, we have discussed benefits of form pond design considerations and protecting the form pond so next is we'll go for percolation tank so percolation tank is not similar to the form pond it is has a separate requirement and it has its own benefits and it has its own role so it is you can call same structure almost same we are constructing but purpose is different the main is and difference is purpose you can see in the image it looks like a form pond but the main purpose is different and site selection is different right so we'll see what you mean by percolation tank percolation tank is a artificial reservoir <coughs> artificial reservoir so even palm pond also artificial reservoir constructed across the stream constructed across the stream submerging the land area submerging land area with the adequate permeability the difference is with the adequate permeability but in a palm pond it is not with adequate permeability it should be impervious why because stored water they are using for agriculture purpose here but we are using permeable facility and uh, why because we have to make sufficient percolation of collected surface runoff water right so here also same structure we are constructing maybe by excavating or maybe across the stream but main purpose is percolating the water main is we are making infiltration you can see here also bund is there and we are excavating some like you no know, see here excavation and through this we are making the groundwater recharge you can see it is groundwater recharge and where exactly we are constructing where permeability is good or submergible area sufficient percolation where we are where we are getting the uh, sufficient percolation and it is also called and it is one of the effective method of refilling groundwater table see we are making when after the using of groundwater groundwater make depletion i think we studied what are the advantages of making water harvesting in that one i explained due to the urbanization we are decreasing the infiltration but that can be overcome by with kind of percolation tank and here it is one of the effective method of refilling groundwater table and also known as groundwater recharge groundwater recharge and the ideal size of the percolation tank must be governed by its capacity of strata in a tank bed so capacity how much bigger size or smaller size it all depends on the strata the geological formation of strata or bed so if it is a good permeable water then we can uh, supply the water more based on the infiltration capacity if it is a less infiltration capacity and when you are supplying more it damages the bund and even it causes the flooding so based on and capacity we can tell that based on the infiltration capacity of the bed right in the reality you can see the image how we are constructing the percolation tank right and in a cross section of the bund you can see how uh, groundwater recharge is taking place 
so next we'll go for design considerations so design considerations also same why because we are constructing the bund right same here also site selection but some points are there to different some main main points how it differ for other structures we'll discuss what are the main requirement of the site selection but after, other than that site selection we are adopting same method construction of bund sluice gate and the surplus we are so all the same right you can refer the same video right second video to know what are the different design consideration or design parameters right so we will see one by one what are the some general guidelines for the site selection right only small changes are there why because purposes are different so first one is percolation tank should be normally constructed in a terrain with the high fractured and weathered rock for a speed recharge see what is the different you should get a land with a high fractured right so then weathered right and weathered rock for speed recharge the main purpose is we have to make the speed recharge and when you will get a speed recharge when you have a loose material or fractured material or weathered means disintegrated of rocks and because of less compaction consolidation where you can get a more groundwater recharge right so second point if it is more permeability it result may result percolation of water escaping in downstream if it is a too high permeability even it is not good why if it is a too much of permeability then uh, the whatever infiltrated water may go for uh, some other places similarly how surface runoff is going from one place to another place quickly similarly groundwater also will go from one place to another place quickly and no use of making the infiltration uh, why because it won't help for nearby surface nearby the area and the main purpose of percolation tank is to improve the groundwater availability in that area so if it is a too much permeable then it is also not good so then aquifer to be recharged should have a sufficient thickness where you are making the groundwater recharge their aquifer should be sufficient thickness means the main reason is your aquifer should have good storage capability and should be vast or bigger so then benefit area must have sufficient number of wells and some other main is wherever you are making the groundwater recharge a percolation tank but in that area uh, like you know usage should be good means in the form of wells or in the open wells or tube wells right in the form of things so then is to minimize the siltation at the bottom of the tank soil in the catchment area should be preferably light sand see here they are mentioning to avoid the siltation why because surface runoff is coming and we know when surface runoff is come in the form of silt or muddy water so when it is carrying the soil if it is a clay soil then it uh, it be it like you no know, it creates the impervious surface on the bed right on the bed so that's what to avoid that right to avoid and main purpose will be lost so entire structure will fail why because clay material so you have to construct in such a way that catchment area where we are collecting the water that should have light sand why why we are selecting the sand because it is a porous material when you are getting the porous material with the water then it it may silt also but it won't affect why because it is sand condition it is has a more permeability so then one more very important we have to study the rain pattern and quantity of water yearly how much is available so long term evaluation of the pattern of rainfall for all benefited area must be studied so main is reason is we have to store the water when you are not getting sufficient of water then no use of constructing the percolation tank even farm pond as well as percolation tank we have to study the rain pattern and minimum of 10 to 20 years of rainfall data is collected and it will help us to minimum condition as well as maximum condition also so if it is a more water more rainfall it will help us how much water has to be stored and how much water has to be relieved based on the water balance equation we know what to mean by water balance equation inflow minus outflow equal to change in the storage we know how much storage capacity it has then based on that outflow will be designed with the help of surface run uh, with the help of sluice uh, and with the help of uh, surplus weir right so that's what rain pattern and rain quantity study is very important i think you understood i'll repeat in this we discussed mainly about the farm pond definition of farm pond and types of farm pond benefits specifications after that we studied percolation tank we studied the some basic concept of percolation tank then design characteristics or design considerations right 
i think you understood thank you for listening this video